What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. If you're on the YouTubes and you're watching the videos, please like it, subscribe it, comment down below for the Al Go Rhythm and help spread the Whiskey Ginger word around to everybody. And that means a lot to us. Uh, I really want to do thank the fans. I like to take opportunities to thank you guys. You're the one that keep, keeps this ball rolling down the hill. And I hope you enjoy what we're pushing out to the world. We're just trying to make you feel good during all the chaos and the term oil. Speaking of oil, keep getting that gas, baby. Keep pumping up them tanks. I think it cost me $185,000 to fill up uh, my car this week. So do yourself a favor. Spread around the Wish Ginge word. Come see me live. I'm only got, I think I have four more dates left. That's it, four more dates. That's all I've got left on the road. And then I'm taking a pretty long break. Um, I did the Netflix is a joke festival where I did my hour. We'll see what I do with the whole thing. Maybe I'll put it out by myself. Maybe I'll just throw it into space and never do it ever again. But come see me. I'm going to be in Vancouver for JFL. Then Lake Tahoe. I'll be in down in Tahoe. And then I'm going over to Montclair, New Jersey. New Jersey. Let's go, baby. Uh, and then finally out there in Niagara Falls is where I'll be. And after that, I think I'm taking some time. Uh, so come see me, andrewsantino.com. andrewsantino.com for those dates. Uh, my guest is Chris Stefano. Say no more. This dude is a nutbag, a goofball, a sweetie pie, and I love him so very much. Stop rambling. Come see me live. AndrewSantino.com. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again. Today is my boyfriend, my lover, my sweet prince, my little silly Sally. It is Chris DeStefano. What's up, baby? I love the sweater, and you said yeah. it's hiding your tatas. I'm holding my tatas. You don't have Robex. tatas. No, I got, well, listen, here, let me tell, remember when we did Fat Howard Stern in Vegas? Yeah. That, that 251, now mm -hmm. 233. Ooh. Only a month later. Wait a minute, really? Yeah, but I do feel fat today because I ate. Um, I just went to Griddle Cafe mm -hmm. and I had pancakes. Ooh, yeah. But were they were they chocolate? Yes, my little chocolate prince. And then You're I my had little a, diabetic queen. I know. I got to stop. But what I have been doing here's what I've been doing is I because people have been asking me like, oh, because that's a 18 pounds in a month is like you know pretty. And I've been working that's out hard or whatever. But I've I've now like I'm trying to do. Every 21 days, like, like hold off my vice for 21 days. Like, I have no alcohol for 21 days. Or I've had, like, today I had the pancakes and the chocolate brownie because 21 days ago was the last time I had that. So I write it down oh. in a little diary. Because, you know, I had a lot of things. I, I like to drink. I like to eat sweets, have pizza. And I'm like, you can do all those things. But every 21 days, that's how I'm trying oh. to think about it. I like that. And then, and you know what I found? Like, today, I, I was thinking about, I had the 21 days. I was like, oh, you could have chocolate today and pancakes. I ate the pancake and I ate the the, the loaf of uh, the vegan whatever uh, the chocolate chip loaf cake I had and I uh, I hate the way I feel right now and I'm like don't do that again in 21 days oh baby boy yeah. well let's have a little drink for another 21 days there it is cheers to you cheers a to little you. bit of rabbit hole in our throat this stuff is good too I think this is the boxer grail you like it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tastes like good tastes like oh so you're in town let me let me tell everybody tell everyone you're back on the show because you're in town. Because you owe me some dick. <laughs> I said, you bring that dick back from New York, baby. Bring that dick. Um, no, you're yeah. in town. First of all, we're doing the Necklace is a Joke Festival, which is a joke. There's too many shows on the goddamn thing. I don't know yep. why we're doing it. It's insane. There's a 1,000 shows tonight. So come see me or 40,000 other artists. Yes. Um, but also because somebody got a special on Netflix. I have a special on Netflix called Speshy Weshy. Please watch. Please watch, you Please guys. watch that, baby. It's up there. Self-produced it. Myself with the- Self-produced. Self-written. Self-directed. Self-wardrobe. You definitely- that, self -wardrobe. You picked that, I could tell, because it was not good. at the end, for the closer, self-inflicted gunshot wound. And self-implosion. They got- <laughs> It just blows up. Oh, you kill yourself? Yeah, again. Well, I kill myself right on stage. <laughs> I peel my cap back. I canoe. You know what canoeing is? Mm. What they do, the Russian soldiers are doing it to Ukrainians, or Ukrainians are doing it to Russian soldiers. What they're doing is they're sticking a gun right on top of their <laughs> mouth, and then they awful. shoot, and then that top of their head blows back. Aww. Like a canoe. Like a, a little canoe. I call it a cuckoo. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah. By the way, I thought canoeing, you know what canoeing used to be when we were young, we were fucked smoking weed, dude. Canoeing would be if it's fucking if it's leaking, like if the you know if the if the yes. flame is leaking. It's fucking canoeing, dude. And canoeing. you have to lick it and stop it from burning up the side. You can't even you think kids canoe today or or they don't do they don't swap Let germs. me tell you something. Nowadays, everyone's eating pot anyway. So I think I don't know if kids are getting together and 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 baking out a car. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know if people are like Everything's sitting edibles. in a car like we used to and smoking out in somebody's you know, like in like a dark road. I don't, I just don't think people are doing that anymore. Do you do edibles or no? Okay. I did. I, okay. I do them sometimes. And I did one about two weeks ago and I went away for a little while. I disappeared. Right. Yeah. Daddy had a couple of drinks of saucy and, and then was... I had myself an edible and I. Lights out. I Good night. I was gone. Yeah. It's just, I get so much. fucking high. I Me get too. so fucking high. And I like doing the edibles. I do on, on uh, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Go. Boo! Every Friday, we do the Chris and Eddie show, or now every other Friday, we do the Chris and Eddie show, where I, t I do a show and I take an edible, we call it an Eddie. And I got to be honest, over the last couple of times I've been taking it, it just gives me a headache. I don't like the way I feel. Mm. I feel like I make some bad decisions. I know edibles are used for, oh, it calms you down, and I, not me. What's I, the dosage? I don't know. Whatever homeless <laughs> pimp gives me, <laughs> homeless pimp just feeds it to me. Can you imagine your grand, your great grandkids hearing this podcast taken out of a vault at some point? And they're yeah. like, "What was he doing? Drugs? Where was he getting them from?" Homeless pimp the gives homeless me dosages. Pimp. The homeless pimp directed my Netflix special. Shout out to Pimpy. We love that dude. Love homeless. Mikey pimp. Wikey is one of the greatest men alive. By the way, when I came to New York the first time, I was or the first night I was back in New York last time. Who's the first person I saw? Not your bitch ass. -uh. I saw Pimpy. I went down to Joe DeRosa's shithole fart box bar yes. that he's got. But he's got good sandwiches. No, I'm just kidding. Joe's going to get mad at us. Joey it, Rose. No, I'm just teasing. Joey Rose is actually, it's a great bar. And it's, great sandwiches. And great sandwiches. Yes. Uh, and it's a great place to go hang out. And that's where I met up with Pimpy Wimpy because it was his birthday. Yep. And we had a fun little night. Also, DeRosa. Shut the fuck up. He's whining. I can hear him in my head. Yeah, being he's like, going to send me voices. Heard dude, what you, I know you said. I know you guys fuck around out there, but like, dude, I'm running a business over here. It's like, it's just a little upsetting. Yeah, no, Joey Rose's is a great bar. Yeah. And please go get a sandwich there during the day and support the people that we love. Yes. Okay, he's a sweet little prince. And yeah, does he have a shady past? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's selling sandwiches now, so sandwiches. let and him make it up. He wears cut-off jean shorts. And, um, and, and Homeless Pimpy... <laughs> Um, and I, we did this special and here's the thing is I'll tell you the truth is we made it because every, you know, you and I would talk all the time. Everybody mm -hmm. was saying no to my special. We try, I said, I tried to go to Amazon. I tried to go to HBO. I tried I to go said to Netflix. No. I said, no, even I'm not Andrew this on Santino my site. said, no, Andrew, San, Andrew Santino's grandmother said yes. And then she passed away. And I, that's what it was. <laughs> and then, and then I'll so, produce it. Yeah. I was going to, and then, and, and so I was like, you know what? I, I, it was this was March fifth. We filmed, we filmed this at the Gramercy Theater in New York. I was supposed to be in Cleveland March fifth, and this was about two, three weeks before that. So let's say it's mid February. Mm -hmm. I was selling no tickets in Cleveland. I had like a hundred tickets sold out of like a thousand. What's going on, Ohio? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Cleveland don't want me. Well, I don't want y'all. So I said, <laughs> so I said, cancel Cleveland. Put, put me at the Gramercy Theater uh, in New York. It's home. Yeah. I'm going to sell tickets. I'm not going to give it away. A lot of comics, when they do a special, will have the audience come in for free because they just want it full. I said, you know what? I'm going to sell the tickets. If I don't sell them, then we'll just do a comedy show for a half-empty room, and I'll make that my special, and I'll make fun of it, and I'll lean into it. I'm going to do it my way because it's going on YouTube. We sold out the Gramercy Theater, thankfully. Thank the good people of New York. New York. New York. And, um, and we shot the show, and at the end of the special, I say... To the end, you know, I said, thank you guys so much for coming. I said, listen, everybody said no to me. Netflix, HBO, Amazon. I said, this is going on YouTube. I said, it's going on YouTube. You guys, the fans, gave me everything. It's going on YouTube. Thank you so much. I was like, but Netflix, if you want to buy it, I'll sell it to you. Like, as a throwaway. <laughs> and then we sent that to Netflix, being like, they're never going to buy it. And they bought it and said, keep that in. They were like, keep that in at the end. So if you watch my special on Netflix, at the end, I say, if Netflix, if you want this, I'll sell it to you. So the guy gives away the end. Look at you, he gave away the end. That's my what are you going to tell us? Jesus dies in the Bible? What's going on? That's my closer. <laughs> but I will say that, uh, yeah, it's nice to have a special on Netflix. But ultimately, you know, because we're doing the pods and we do the Patreon and we do all that stuff. It's like, you know, I hope, it, I really hope the Netflix special goes well. But if it doesn't, I still got my baby girl right here. I'm your little sweet princess forever. You and are. by the way, it is going to go well because I got sent an email from some of the analytics over there. And in, insider tip. It's doing good. Yeah. It's, it's doing real it, good. It got on the trending now page, which I heard is it, 
here's the thing. Here, here. Let me, let me. Let, I feel like that might be organic. Is it? Well, yeah. That is. You know, like when somebody does a special, uh, when somebody puts out an album on iTunes. You may see this as the fans. You know, somebody puts an album out on iTunes. Somebody, R. Kelly puts out oh, an album on, on iTunes. I, uh, well, no, a comedian. Yeah, he he, does, he puts his comedy album on <laughs> iTunes, and all of a sudden, it's called "Piss on This," <laughs> and, and 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 it's and then um and then. It goes to number one. Like, yeah. they release it in number one, but it's like the comedian is like, you know, not a guy that you've ever really heard of or whatever, and they're like, I got the number one comedy album in the world. It's like, you really don't. No, you don't. It's an algorithm trick. It's just, it's this new thing that just came out, so it shoots it up because nobody else was releasing anything. Right. So it's like, you really don't. It's all smoke and mirrors. So when I got on the Netflix Trending Now page, I was like, that's what that is. It's, it's fake. It's just because it's the new thing. But then I heard that, no, actually... It does mean something. It does. Because, so I just want to say thank you to any of the fans that listen to the Chrissy Chaos and Hey Babe podcast. It's because of y'all we got on the Trending Now page. So thank you very much. Thank you for Netflix didn't pay me enough, but what can you do? They didn't pay you anything. I saw the I check. Honestly, I lost money. You owe them money now. I jet. You know what's so funny you say that? Mm -hmm. I genuinely, it's not much, but I, I swear I'll just be up front. With the, what they paid me versus- Don't tell them. Don't say what they paid you. No, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm saying what they, what they paid me versus what I paid- for the, oh, to get it done? To get it done and all the, the math. I, I swear to God, I actually am down about $18. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> random weird number. Like, I actually, I actually lost 18 bucks. But you know what? Because that's where it came out. Whatever, dude. Win-win, baby. Baby, hey, it cost me $18 to get on Netflix. That's really cool. By the way, that should be the next show yeah. you do is $18 Netflix. $18 Netflix. 18 and by the way, now that you're on there and you're successful as ever, the next special, now they're going to give you more money, yeah, and then and more money, and then more money, and, and then more guess money. guess what? Getting a comedy special on Netflix in 2022, guess it's who it's another win for. Yeah. Yup. Is that what it is? Well, I was thinking <laughs> of a joke, and I, it's arms. <laughs> it's, oh, what is that? No, Are you no, waving no. hi to a buddy? No, I was just saying Chris O'Connor just came in. Chris my good buddy Chris O'Connor just came in to grab something. We're using his charger. Chris O'Connor came in and went like that. Yeah. You know he's Hitler Youth. You could tell just by looking at him, yeah, that kid. Yeah, dude. Chris O'Connor's got, he's got like a body... He's got like a like. He's in good shape. He's now. in good shape, but he's 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 got he's like compact. Come he's, here, Connie, he looks real like fast. Like a jack, like a like a like a lesbian catcher. And for people that 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 look don't know Chris O'Connor, come over here so we can see get you. In here. here, sit right between get us on right there. there. For come people on. that don't know Chris O'Connor, look, look at this. This this is my prince. This is my little sweet boy that I love more than look anything. This is he. I you know bet. he's got a and he's got a great new podcast that people need to go watch. It's actually a with, Stuff with, Island with insane Tommy Pope, who's also in town. Yeah, uh, Stuff you want to Island. Talk about a hot bod, Tommy Pope. <laughs> yeah, he's a sexy guy. All these guy. boys are getting now. Shane's getting ripped. He's already been ripped. Tommy Pope, but alcoholics We're getting nonetheless. Chubby -wubby. Bad alcoholics nonetheless. You have to uh, somehow. Well, right. and homeless pimp um listens to Stuff Island. He said he thinks it's the best new pod out there. I see. Yo, you pod, hear that? Are you garbage? <laughs> I look watched at that. Look at this. Look at right, his fucking tight little, little ass. Yeah, look, look at his gait. Look at that. Like, you just got to have a horse all the time. You, you do, do have, you an, have Asian an Asian body. body. You, wow, you do. You look like an, one of those Asian car dealers at, like, Mandalay Bay in Vegas. Yeah, like, you're mad every time yeah. I win. Look at that. Yo, look, you got the yellow You got the yellow and black uptowns. You Latin king? <laughs> you LK? You know, the, he's bow-legged as fuck, though. You he see is bow-legged. Like, so, like, somebody kicks out of his knees every morning. Yeah. Look at how big, yeah. look at how wide his stance is. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, it's like a catcher. It's like, it, it, but, but like a bullpen catcher. Like a, yeah. You got bullpen catcher bod, BCB. <laughs> no, no. But he's been catching for dude, a long so, time. You know, speaking of bullpen catcher, one of my friends, this is a true story. I think he was the bullpen catcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. But anyway, one of my friends, and he lived in New York for some reason, was banging the bullpen catcher for the Toronto Blue Jays girl while he would go to games. My friend would go over and bang his girl, and one day this ballpen catcher guy came home and beat the shit out of my boy. What? Yeah, it was like, he goes, I forgot, I genuinely forgetting what the guy's name was. I wouldn't care, I would air it out. But I remember, like, he texted the group chat. He was like, yo, I just got fucked up. I don't know what to do. We're like, what happened? And he's like, yo, Mimi. And then we talked. He goes, yeah, whatever. He goes, you know, he came home. I was like, you got beat up by the bullpen catcher <laughs> for the Toronto Blue Jays, you little pussy. Like when the relief pitcher comes and yeah. beats your ass? Yeah, he came Give me a starter. I'm going to get beat up by a starter if I'm going to yeah. get the shit kicked out of me. Yeah, beat the, somebody like Max Scherzer or somebody hit me with his fucking double colored <laughs> eyes. <laughs> the yeah, baseball players are going to fuck No, I don't want to fight a hockey player either, though. Same kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. Same kind of mood. Players baseball players are thick cans. And just hitting. Yeah, yeah low connect. power. Thrust. That's true. Legs and thrust. they're like actual guys. I love you, you Connie. I mean? I'll see you love in a minute. You, Connie. Wait, guys do you need man. your charger, Con? No, he'll come back. You'll come, okay, all right. This has oh, turned into Chrissy Chaos, by the way. This That's is Chrissy like Chaos. It. Welcome. And, and yeah. This is this is what I like about you. When you come into town, we always eat bad food. We, we're going to go to have good dinner tonight and go do a couple of live shows. 
You want me to come along to the Peppermint Club? Come to the Peppermint Club, and then we're going to go to Rayo's. You want to come to Rayo's, and that's not for you. No, it's not for me. We should. Our show should be called Bad Foods. Wait, I made us a dinner reservation before the show. Oh, did you? Yeah. Fuck do you it. Know? Let's go. Me and you. Where are we going to go? It's before the eight of the before the Bad Friends show. Where is it? It's a restaurant right across the street from the Comedy Store. Uh, and what time is that? Mm, it's probably going to be around like six thirty, seven. Six thirty. Okay, let's go six thirty-seven. Let's do it. I got enough. I got enough. Everybody can come. Yeah, we got me, you, and then we got you know Billy Hayes. Mm mm. Big Billy Hayes, big Jets fan. He wants to come too. So that'll be fine. All right, we'll see what I feel when I when I get done with the podcast. No, but we're gonna okay. Because <laughs> I made a, uh, I think he made a reservation for Rayos, but I'm gonna tell him. Oh, well, whatever. We can cancel one or do I the don't other. No, one. cancel Rayos. I want to go with you. Okay, good. I see. That's why I like when my little my, when my little sweetie comes into town. You can't tell him a little thinner. Me. You do look a little bit thinner, but a I, little. But bit. Here's what I think it is. Yeah. I think being a father again, a new a new father again. Yeah. You know, I think it's made you a little bit more happier, which leads to healthier, which leads to skinnier. Yes. You know what I mean? When you're happy, you're healthier, and then you're probably eating better and and yeah. more right, and you're not doing, you know, you're not eating. Are you not? Are you eating bad stuff again at later? No. At night? Well, what happened is, is now, well, Jasmine, first of all, happier with Jasmine, which is good, um, because she, I've been coming around. That's yeah, why. because you fucking give her the pipe, <laughs> and I've been banging TT Jerry. That's why I get my nuts off. Um, so, so. Um, she goes with uh, Green Chef, unless HelloFresh is a sponsor. Who's the sponsor? Green Chef or HelloFresh? <laughs> no, no, neither one? No, it's fine. Okay, so she goes with Green Chef. And, um, and what they do is they send you, like, these packaged meals. Uh -huh. And so we just eat. There's, like, no thought at all. Like, right. And she gets it for the whole family. So we get, like, these boxes every Monday that come. But we just eat that, and we only eat 12 to 7 for the most part when we're home. So I guess kind of like intermittent fasting. And it's kind of like, not even like I'm trying to be on a diet. It's like that, finally, that thing where it's like, it's just my way of life now. Right. That's changed. So I don't necessarily even eat all that health. I mean, it's healthy, but like, you know, I'll fuck around, have this, have that. But the weight just keeps coming off. And I just feel better in my clothes I now. think that's what I mean. I think the weight yeah. starts to come off when you feel mentally better, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now that you've been cleared, because look, there were rumors out there that you were one of the guys that was filming some of the Hunter Biden sex tapes. Mm-hmm. And now it's been clear that you you not. did not provide any of the drugs. No. You did not film any of that stuff, and you were not at the hotel with Hunter. Nope. So now that that's been cleared, I think a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. I feel good. The weight's been lifted off the shoulders. Um, I, I, you know, listen, am I friends with Hunter Biden? Do I know him? Yes. Very well. Yes. But I didn't, um, I didn't, film, I didn't film any of that stuff at all uh, because, to be honest with you, and I don't, and this is not speaking ill of the dead at all. This is like genuinely something that like, you know, I'm comfortable sharing now. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I was friends with Hunter. But on those alleged incidents that people have accused me of of being there, I actually wasn't there because what I actually was is I'm going to be honest with you is I was in what I considered a committed relationship. I don't know how she felt, but I was in a relationship. Rest in peace with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Get out of town and come on. Ruth back. Bader Ginsburg and I were RBG. Having yeah, and you know what she would you know what's crazy about RBG? Mm. And again, like it's just nuts that she said this now. She literally, <laughs> she literally, when she would come, she would go, Roe v. Wade is bullshit. <laughs> she said that? she would say that. <laughs> and then she'd be shaking like she'd go, fuck Roe v. Wade. Wow. Yeah. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. I just didn't I wouldn't have picked that as that's who she really is. Or she would say, stick my row, stick your row in my wade. She would do things she like that. She would call her vagina wade. Uh-huh. Wow. Now, now, is there a cartoon to be made that you and I make called, <laughs> called Roe versus D Wade? And we do Roe versus Dwayne Wade. Well, it, it's and it's Derek Rose. Derek Rowe. Derek Rowe. Rose, Rose versus D Wade. Versus D Wade. I think we could do that. You know what? I, I had an aunt. <laughs> shout out again, RIP. I had an aunt Rosemary, but we called it Aunt Roe Roe, and she was just like a classic New York City lady from the Bronx, would just Ro, smoke Ro. cigarettes. Aunt Ro Ro. Chrissy, come here. Yeah. Give your aunt the case. She would go like, especially in the beginning, and even now. A little bit, but like you know, my family like at times would be very embarrassed by my comedy or be like, "What are you doing?" Like I am that. a little bit sometimes. But Aunt Ro would always be smoking a cigarette. She'd be like, "My Christie's funny. He's a star." See, she loves. She would go. You. Hey, she go. He's a star. Where is she now? With Ruth Bader. Six feet on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you ever it. visit? Uh, Aunt Ro Ro. Uh, no, I don't even know where so that. This hell... woman loved you. She yeah. thought you were a king. No idea where she is. No idea where she <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. Dude, no. That's I, how much you liked her. That's how much I liked her. Yeah, no. listen, some of our greatest fans become some of Dude, the most. My grandfather, <laughs> my actual grandfather, who was like one of my best friends, I've went and visited his grave once. I've went and visited Alexander Hamilton's grave at Trinity Cemetery in New York City like 50 times. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is this, and this is why, kitties, I think cremation. All my relatives yeah. are cremated. 
Just where do I visit you all the time? In my mind, I visit you. Yeah. Just spread me out to the. I want to be cremated. You want to be cremated? In here, we pour whiskey. Whiskey. Hey, life can be pretty overwhelming. I've spoken pretty candidly on this show about how much I believe in getting help for your mental health. Um, I am someone that suffers with a bunch of different stuff. And I think speaking to someone is probably the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, you know, symptoms are like lack of motivation. You can be tired. You feel helpless. You feel trapped. Detachment, fatigue, and so much more. And I think you need to start taking care of yourself. Truly. Uh, the world is upside down. We need to start uh, feeling better about ourselves before we can feel better about anything else. And, you know, you burn out at work and you associate that with other causes and you don't really know what's doing it. Well, prioritize you. Take you first and make sure that you're trying to speak to someone so you can get through whatever you've got going on. I like BetterHelp. I think it's great. You can do it from anywhere, anywhere you are, anytime. And uh, it's a customized licensed online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to be on video if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, which is great. It's a little bit cheaper. And you don't got to be in some weird office somewhere. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. So listen, Whiskey Ginger listeners are going to get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. That's BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. Better, B-E-T-T-E-R, help, H-E-L-P, dot com slash whiskey. Hey, I want to talk to you about Inside Tracker. All right, people age at different speeds. The date on your license may not represent your inner biological age at all. My grandma once told me she felt like she was 24 for the rest of her life. If you're looking for ways to extend your health span and slow down the aging process, the keys to health and longevity run in your blood, baby. That's why vampires drink it, because they want to be young forever. Forever young. No. That's why Inside Tracker provides you with a personalized plan to improve, boost your metabolism, reduce stress, improve sleep, and optimize your health for the long haul, right? Created by leading scientists in aging genetics and biometrics, Inside Tracker analyzes your blood DNA and fitness tracking data to identify where you're optimized and where you're not. For layman's, as in me, if I was listening to this, I go, what are you talking about, Santi? It basically analyzes your blood to find out what you're lacking in and what you're doing fine in. That's great. You'll get a daily action plan with personalized guidance on the right exercise, nutrition, and supplementation for your body. They tell you, here's what you need, here's what you don't really need, and here's what you really need. Sleep. Sleep and good food. Uh, add inner age 2.0 to any plan for a definitive calculation of your true biological age to see how you're aging from the inside out. It's pretty incredible. Uh, honestly, it's kind of wild to show to to see uh, biometrically how old you are or how old your innards are on this planet. And uh, give it a try. Find out what you're lacking in. Find out what you need to improve on. For a limited time, you can get 20% off the entire Inside Tracker store. 20% off the entire store. All you have to do is go to insidetracker.com slash whiskey. That's insidetracker.com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. Did I ever tell you the story about when Jasmine's father died? Mm -mm. About that? Oh, my God. Okay. So, <laughs> so he died in, I want to say, January 2017. Very suddenly, very, um, you know, sad, whatever. Had a heart attack, whatever. It was a healthy guy. Just dropped dead. So... He was a huge Donald Trump supporter, okay. Puerto Rican guy. But I mean, a huge, to the point where like, because at that point in 2016, you know, my daughter Delilah was like two months old. I like barely knew Jasmine and her family. And, you know, them being Puerto Rican, when Trump got elected, it was only like the second or third time I'd ever even met Jasmine's father. And we, he comes over for dinner and Trump had got elected the night before. And I swear to God. And then so we're sitting down and, you know, he says to me, he goes, well, what do you think of uh, the election? And I said, honestly, Mr. Canuelas, I think, uh, you know, we're just going to get through these next four years. Like, I know some of the things he said about the Latino families, uh, what Trump has said about Latinos and like, you know, me being the father of a Latino daughter, like, I, you know, I, and being white, like I promised to like, mm -hmm. you know, defend her and all like going on this rant. Like, because I just thought, even though I didn't believe in any of it, I just thought that's what you say to like your girl's dad, like your father-in-law pretty much. I was like, I just think like it's, it's right. It falls on me as a white person to defend her and I will always do that knowing she's a member of the Latinx community like trying to be like all oh, whatever mm -hmm. and I swear he go and Jasmine's just like looking at me like what are you doing and he goes are you finished and I go yeah out of a little shopping bag 
he takes out a newspaper and a Make America Great Again hat on. He goes, I love the results. No I way. swear to God. And I was like, wow. I was like, you're a Trump supporter? He goes, absolutely. And then he went on all these things. He goes, what he said was about Mexicans. And I agree. Because he's like Puerto Rican. You know, like whatever. <laughs> like he starts going crazy. Yeah. And then he dies like a few months later. And you think that's why he died? <laughs> yeah, I think Hunter got yeah. too ramped up he about. Got, being I mean, he would, Trump. Go, he would go fucking crazy. So he's like, he, Trump's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so rest in uh, peace, by the way. Rest in peace. On there, we lost a Republican. So at their funeral, <laughs> at the funeral, you know, you know, the day before, whatever, like when we're doing the arrangements, mm-hmm. I went in there with with Jazz, and the funeral director was like this old school Italian guy, like a real like neighborhood guy, like yeah. that that one thousand percent initially started his funeral business 30 years ago as a mafia front and then just you know when the mafia kind of went away just literally like became like a mortician like yeah, yeah. no way it's anything's legit like no. he does it but it's like he does he never went to school it's like you got cash for the cash kit yeah like that well no he, so he had like a cappuccino machine downstairs like he had all these pictures of fucking rudy giuliani and this mob boss and that mob boss and you could tell he was like a guy you know pinky ring but real nice very respectful guy you know he's sitting in his office and you know she's crying you know, Jasmine, it's your father. Mm-hmm. And she finally says, she goes, I, I can't, like, Chris, can you just, like, help, like, you know, take over? Like, just just make the arrangements. Like, you smart, you figure it out. Like, I'm just sad. And she's crying, you know, there. He's giving a tissue. She goes, oh, my, he's like, angel, sweetheart. Like, it's all right. He's in heaven now. And, you know, I've done this. I see their bodies. It's, it's fine. He, he went quick. Like, all these things. She's like, thank you, whatever. And he goes, and out of nowhere, he pivots. He goes, let me ask you a question. He goes, what was his political affiliation? And she was like... Um, I don't know. I don't know how that's relevant. And he was like, I just want to know. He goes, you know, he seemed like a blue collar guy, a working guy. He goes, what do you know? Like what his affiliation was? And then I said, cause I knew like what this guy's affili- affiliation was. I said, well, I, I think his name was Ran- Randazzi. I said, well, actually, Mr. Randazzi, Rizzotti. I go, actually, Mr. Rizzotti, he was a, he was a Donald Trump supporter. He goes, that man in that casket was a Donald Trump supporter. I said, yeah. He goes, let me tell you something. He goes, not only did we lose a man, we lost an American man. He goes, and they're rare. He goes, he goes, and then he just proceeds to tell us the story. He goes, listen to me. He goes, first of all, first of all, he goes, did he find them? Was he in the military? And Jasmine was like, yeah, he actually was like stationed at like a fort in Brooklyn. Like he never saw real wartime. He goes, he served his country. He goes, on the house, I'm getting the color guard and we're going to get a bald eagle. Swear to, he go, they, they came the next day with the color guard, which is like they fold up the American mm-hmm. flag and that. And they had, one guy had a bald eagle on his arm as like a, you know. Just chilling. Bro, the bald eagle, that must have cost like 20. Like, you can't just get a bald eagle. Like Where did he even get him? Bro, he probably, these mafia guys probably have, fuck, like, it's, like. I got the bald eagle guy. Got, yeah, he goes, the bald eagle. And, and, and he, he says he wants a bald eagle. Hey, he wants a bald eagle. Well, that bald eagle needs keeps. Fucking hair prevention. <laughs> 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 so, 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 we, so, you know, he goes, get that. I'm like, okay. So he goes, um. And he's like, uh, he goes, and he goes, and he's a Puerto Rican guy. I was like, yeah. And, and she was like, yeah, we're Puerto Rican. He goes, yeah. They, he goes, you see, like, you know, he goes, all Latinos are not bad people. And <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> none of us said that. He goes, no, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like, you always hear, like, that, you know, minorities aren't the best people. We're like, we've never heard that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, said, we've all said that. Yeah, Everyone he goes, says he goes that. listen, you know, everybody's politically correct out there. Like, let's just be honest, right? <laughs> he goes, you know, it's just nice to see that some of the Latinos voted for Trump. Like, you know, you could trust some of them. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so, Not with your kids, but, you know, yeah, with the Yeah, so I'm like, this is brutal. So he goes, um, so finally he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, oh, I want to give, give a discount. On all this, I want to give a discount. Sweet man. Yeah, I want to do anything. He goes, because, you know, he goes, I had enough of these fucking liberals, these Hillary Clinton liberals. And I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, so what's the casket going to cost? Like, you know, we don't want to, she's hysterical crying. I was like, I just want to get her out of here. And, you know, I want to get her some adobo, <laughs> some papa fritas. That's what she needs to calm down. <laughs> and so, and so, so I go, I need, she needs to get a Malta. So, <laughs> So, so, so he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes like last night, he goes, I had these fucking people in here, these fucking deadbeats. He goes, you know, big, big libs, right? They come in here, big libs. He goes, all these fucking guys. He goes, so I asked the guy, he goes, you know, this guy's fucking running his mouth about Trump at the, at the funeral, right? Fucking disrespect. He goes, I asked the guy, I said to him, tell me one fucking thing. Tell me one fucking thing. That Donald Trump's done so far, that's been wrong. We're real proof. He goes, none of this Anderson Cooper bullshit. He goes, tell me (laughs) one real thing that Donald Trump's done wrong, and I'll give you the fucking funeral for free. 
for free. He goes, guess what? They paid full price. <laughs> they couldn't give me any clue. They couldn't give me any facts about nothing because all fucking Donald Trump does is the right thing. He goes, next thing you know, he goes, you know what? If Hillary would have won, everybody would be cutting their dicks off. That's the next thing. <laughs> Nobody has a dick. And then I was like, wow. And then, bro, he literally... He gave us like an urn. Everyone's like, cutting their dicks. He goes, he goes, Hillary's president, everyone cuts their <laughs> dicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, they pay full price. And this guy was so fucking funny, dude. And then he during the funeral the mm -hmm. next day, you know, people are crying, whatever, it's upset. He took us downstairs. He had a cappuccino machine. He had all these fucking nice things. And he's showing Sweet us guy. <laughs> all pictures of fucking people. And then I said to him, and then I said to him, uh, you know, got to know him a little bit. I said, I said, how did you even get into the funeral business? And he goes, my father was a killer. And I was like, ha -ha. and then he just went, just looked at me. <laughs> Twenty-eight eighty-five for the casket. He's like, my father was a killer. Jesus Christ. I was like, interesting. I'm interesting. not fucking with this guy. No, but and listen, dude, they've had the funeral home there for a long time, and uh, and he's he, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, and he goes and he goes, and it was funny, I guess, but it's just like a business thing. He like gave me his card. He goes, hey, you know anybody that dies, you send them this way. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, hey, my buddy Santino just died in California. Send him to Brooklyn. Send him to Brooklyn. If he's one of us, he's one of us. One of, it'd be funny if like funeral homes started promoting on podcasts. Use the promo code dead. Yeah, Rosati's. Somebody you know just died. Go to Rosati's. Go to Brooklyn, New York. You'll be taken care of unless you're a fucking Democrat. That, yeah, and then he oh, was talking about De Niro too. He was yeah. like, yeah, he goes, I'd like to fucking put De Niro in one of these caskets. I was like, Jesus Robert De Niro? Christ, I, was like, I was like, why Robert De Niro? He goes, the guy's a fucking rat. It's a fucking rat, well, liberal. Told, well, then he told me, he said that. But he also said, actually, like in Little Italy and some of like these like deep Brooklyn neighborhoods where like there's the mafia is still prevalent or like was in the 90s, he can't go because he would borrow money sometimes when he was financing his own movies. Like if the studio only gave him a certain amount. He would borrow from these guys, but not pay back the juice. You think that's real? He was saying it was real. This guy was saying. Don't you it was think somebody would go after him after that? That's money? what I thought, but maybe he's just so well protected. But they thought, you know, speaking of the mafia too, at least in New York, I don't know how it is in Chicago. I know you haven't been back in a bit, but because of like, you know, like kind of them being lax on crime and all that stuff, and and with COVID, like letting criminals out, the mafia is starting to like pop back up again, like bubble back up Ooh. in like the cafes and stuff in New York. It's actually kind of cool. To see like real guys sitting outside again. Like I I went, I live on Staten Island now. So when I go back to Bay Ridge, which is right over the bridge to get like coffee, like visit like some of the old places, like you I saw like in the last two weeks, I saw like two or three different like places with like guys sitting outside or guys sitting outside with like balloons with like, you know, so and so's coming home. Like guys getting out of jail and then they're running their business because the cops aren't really on them anymore. Well, what would they get them for anyway? Now racketeering is the big one, right? Isn't that racketeering or if if you um uh, is racketeering the one? What's the one where like you like? Well, they usually get them on tax evasion or racketeering, and I don't know which ones. Which. I feel like now they get they'll get them on like fucking like some digital crime. It's a type of organized crime which the perpetrator set up a uh, like coercive, a fraudulent, extortionary, or otherwise illegal coordinated scheme. Operation. Extortion. Is yeah, the, it, that's racketeering is kind of like uh you know pay, like paying the neighborhood too. It's well, like, like, like you know, I had an aunt yeah. who, whose whose husband was involved in the mafia, and what she okay. said. Was again, her husband was involved in it, so I don't know how these people felt. But she said, like they're like, like the people that they would, you know, essentially extort. They didn't say that, but they'd be like, "Yo, you pay us whatever it is, a five percent of your sales a month or a week, whatever the number was, and you're protected. Anybody messes with this store, steals anything, does anything, you got us." They, she said, they liked that. They liked paying this little well, tax because they, they can't call the cops. No, but they said like no, nobody. Like, I'm saying. If somebody comes to try to rob them, they can't call the cops. The cops are never going to show up. No. So this way, they know that if somebody tries to rob them, they're paying tax, so the re cops, the street cops protect them. Well, I told... In the That's the mafioso way was like, hey, man, no one's fucking with this store. You're not robbing here because I'm get I'm kicking back to the mob so no one fucks with my well, business. I, I actually feel bad. Like, there's a group of kids. They must be kids, like 19, 20, going around, like, robbing cars, robbing packages in people's driveways in my neighborhood. I don't want to say I feel bad for them, but I don't think what they understand is that everyone in my neighborhood has like a loaded shotgun in their house. And now, because the police haven't really been doing anything, I'm on like a group text with like all these other fathers in the neighborhood that are like, put your cameras on, make sure you have your cameras on. Everybody's got to have their cameras on. You see anybody on your property, you shoot. <laughs> like everybody shoots. And I'm like, <laughs> these kids now are like, one of these kids is going to get killed. Yeah, clip them. 
Yeah, it's what it is. But right? also shotgun bullets, it sprays. It's not gonna. Yeah, you know, it's not gonna. Yeah, we got the. I got a the buck shot. That's yeah, what I it's have. It's gonna go all over the place. But that's good. So if I if somebody came into my house and I shot them with the buck shot, it wouldn't kill them. Yeah, it depends how close you are. Say that. Say that it's the middle of the night. They fucking come to my front door and I spray it. Chances are the buckshot is just disable them. You're probably gonna. But no, you you probably will kill them. Yeah. You'd have to be like if you're if you're a pretty good distance away, it might spray them and they might live through it. But if you're at the front door and you're 15, 20 feet away, it's going to kill him. going to kill him. It's well, going to kill him good. So would you feel bad if somebody came if you in broke and tried into to rob my house and you shot and, and I killed shot them? You? Would you feel bad? Why would I? I you don't wouldn't know. feel bad. Well, because I don't know your intention. What if you're trying to come kill or rape or hurt someone I love? That's, I, of course, I don't care. You don't know their intention. If you broke in, I don't know if you were going to steal, if you're going to kill me, if you're going to hurt me. No, I don't care that I killed you. You broke in. I think it should be legal if someone breaks into your house unknowingly, you should be able to kill them. What would you do if somebody came in to mm-hmm. your house? Like, they broke in your house in the middle of the night. They have a fucking gun to you and your wife's head. And they say, all I want to do, all I want to do is get down and start licking your dog's asshole. That's all I want to do until I come. And then I'll leave. Would you I've just let them you, do it? Seriously. I've told you this. You can do that if you want to do that. You don't have to ask me on the podcast. It's not me, man. <laughs> if somebody comes in and said, I want to have sex with your dog. Like, that's all I want to do. But they have a gun to your, you and your wife's head. And they're like, I will leave if you just let me come in your dog's little asshole. Would you let them do it? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I say yeah. I, I would say yes, but I got to film it for the internet. For the you got to for, go. for Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> 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 I'd have to put that on Patreon. Patreon. I, you know what's so funny though? What? Okay, so what if somebody walked in the house and they and they say you, Jazz, or the girls? <sighs> oh me, I'd kill me. Really? Yeah, dude. I can't because if I, I was you, I'd be like. Get rid of the girls. Whoa. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. no, well, because the kids you got to no. protect at all costs. Oh, no, of course. And Jazz, the thing is, with if I kill Jazz, it's like, yeah, like you know, be free, can bang other chicks, whatever. But it's like I can't <laughs> raise the girls. No, you can't. I don't even know how to do my kids' hair. Like no, yeah. I need Jazz. You need Jazz. No, I need Jazz. You should take the bullet. Yeah, you should take the bullet. If he walked in and said, "You are your wife," and I'd go. What's that? Yeah. And look, and I would run as fast run as I could. I'd be out of there. Ah! <laughs> no. What I would say is, how about this? What if we do what I would say this? Why don't, instead of killing one of us, why don't I leave and you take, like, you come in, you, you can become have sex me. with her. You become my, you become, you become me. the we dad. We change things, and I take the gun, and I run people. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go Where's to your, your neighbors? Switch? Yeah, you go on stage. You got a gig next Switchies. week. Switchies. 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 Yeah. You got, you're in Count Basie in Red Bank next week. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, by the way, you got to sell some tickets, so start posting on your Instagram, because things are going bad. Things are going bad. That is funny to switch with a criminal. You're like, yeah. look, you be me, and I'll be you. That's it. We'll see who has it worse. See who has it worse, You baby. didn't do any really criminal stuff when you were young, though. When I was young. You th- weren't like a bad boy like that. No. Did you th- rob anybody ever? No, I would rob things from like stores, Same. like little klepto shit. But What's not, the biggest thing you stole? That's the thing. Not even anything from like a department store. It would be like I'd steal a candy bar from a bodega, like where they probably stole it off a truck. You know, yeah. like, so I'm just like, nothing. I ne- I, I'll be honest, I was a pussy. Like, I remember one time vividly, I was visiting my cousin in Staten Island. I was like 15, 16 at this point. And the guys that we were hanging out with, like, you know, my cousin's boyfriends and their friends, like, you know, they were hanging out. They were cool guys, whatever. We were you know, in like whatever, a parking lot or a park or something at like 10 o'clock and guys from another neighborhood came over that they had beef with. I had nothing to do with. I was just there Mm -hmm. and they got into like a big brawl and I hid under a car. I hid under a car with my girl cousins. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was like, it's not my fight. It's not my fight. You know what? It's not your fight. I know, but I I mean, a regular guy would have just joined in on the fight. You got to start swinging. Yeah, because they, and I was, I literally hid with the women. Aww. Aww. But that's why you're so sensitive and appreciative of women and you respect them. Dusty Slay and I were talking and Dusty said, "What well, you know, we're comedians because something was a little off. Like, you're a good looking guy, but there's something. Not when I was young. But but it's like you had to develop the sense of humor because there was you weren't a real like. Well, I was an ugly little skinny, uh, uh, pimple faced, uh, uh, redhead, big eared weirdo i looked like a weirdo right you were a little chunky wonky well no i wasn't chunky i was skinny mini with a mushroom haircut and big gums Dude. gingivitis guy had big gums big gums we all had a little bit of something something yeah and that's what helps you kind of gain a little bit of humor about how fucked up everything is everything who's is actually someone who's handsome but actually is legitimately funny daniel tosh that's the only the one first guy that comes to my mind daniel tosh is, is he was always a handsome guy that was so fucking funny to me and i'm like that guy's so fucking funny and good. Uh, Jessenick's good looking too. Jessenick. He's a handsome guy. Kevin Hart's handsome guy. And he's muscular, cute, but he's, he's short. Cute. But he's short. He's cute. So that, so that takes away. All right, exactly. That yeah. levels it out. You know who's a handsome guy? 
who's a handsome guy who a lot of people um uh, and and very funny Dion Cole. Hot. He's yeah. He's hot. very good looking. Oh, you God. like that? I you li- like your chocolate. I like black men. Uh, you know who else? Gary Goldman, handsome guy. Big Gary tall, Goldman, handsome, big handsome guy. Handsome guy. Big handsome guy. Um, good hair, great hair. Who's another really handsome? He used to play football for Boston College, yeah. Gary Goldman. Yeah, Do you well, know like how insane that is to play Division One football? Well, you could tell he's a big, he's a big six, boy. Six, six, but a tight end. And I I've heard a tight end. That, I heard he used to give it to audience members a little bit. Like he would, oh, yeah. he'd be begging for a, a scrap. Him and Jim Gaffigan. Gaffigan? Oh, Gaffigan's you never a heard Gaffigan. But you never heard the story about Gaffigan at Gotham Comedy Club. Somebody said something about uh, Gaffigan. I think, I think this is the story. Some. Somebody was being unruly, like an audience member was being unruly, and I think at Gaffigan's show, but, you know, Gaffigan, professional, whatever, you know, polite and all that, and it's just going through his material, but I think that he got, it got to the point where it got so bad, like the security had to come and remove the guy, and I don't know if they were having a hard time with him, or Gaffigan just wanted to fucking start swinging. He jumped to the crowd and started beating the shit. Dude, he's and, a big boy. And removing the audience member with with the security it's like a funny story from new york love that. yeah that's that, that's that irish lad well, because gaffigan, coming out. Jimmy, I, swinging for the fences i love jim gaffigan and he's like a clean comic but when, when he starts you know when we all well, just having a few pops at the bar you start to realize like this guy's just an irish motherfucker from the midwest oh yeah like his face gets a little beat red and he's just ready to start swinging he's also <clears throat> super smart so yeah. like he's playing a good jedi mind trick on you when he does this very sweet and his comedy yeah. is very like kind of like heartfelt and clean but yeah. like very clever then when you talk to him, you're like, oh, there's some darkness in I love there. it. I love, but there's I love it. There's a little bit of darkness That's what I like there. in a comic. It's like, yeah, You have Jimmy to have a little, bit of, a little bit of darkness. Yeah. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey. Hey, a lot of you have already heard of Peloton. I'm sure some of you even have Peloton. Uh, but you might not feel motivated to get up, get out, and get moving. You might, you might be like, I don't have time, Santino. I don't have time to work out. Workout classes fill up quickly, and you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in a room full of 55 people competing to try to see you can get the highest score. Well, I got to tell you, this is a big deal. Peloton now, they've got instructors that are highly trained fitness pros who motivate you through every workout, whether you're a regular at the gym or someone who's just getting back into working out. It could be just new again. They got a team of world-class instructors ready to motivate you 24-7. You don't have to fill in to some stupid class clock. It's whenever you need it, from cycling and strength training to yoga and running. Experiment with new types of movement, judgment-free, at level and pace that feels good for you at your own leisure. Man, do I love home leisure stuff. I can do it whenever I want, wherever I want. I'm a big fan of this, by the way. I like doing yoga, and I don't want to do it in a class because I look stupid when I stretch. I got a weird body, and it's pale and orange, and I don't want people to see me stretching. So I like doing it at home. Uh, And they got the perfect song with the perfect playlist. Every Peloton class is set to a bomb playlist. It's Liddy, as the kids would say. In the mood for uh, a ride full of club bangers and EDM run, you can pick whatever you want. You can get a 10-minute upper body stretch between calls or a 40-minute run before you go to bed. You can fit this into your schedule to customize it to the way you want. Uh, And you're never going to have to have some awkward, weird encounter in the locker room again where you're trying not to make eye contact with some dudes. Yo, yo, down below. Right now is the perfect time to try out Peloton. The Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's best price yet, including free delivery and setup. Come on, man. And there are more game-changing prices available on the original Peloton Bike and Peloton Tread as well. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's OnePeloton.com to learn more. Bird dogs. Bird dogging it. Uh, Bird dogs make some of the most comfortable, stretchy, durable uh, shuts shorts and slack that I've ever put on on my body. Um, I love the Bird Dogs uh, shorts because they have these comfortable linings. The lining, I'm a huge fan on no undies. I don't like underwear, all right? Underwear when you're working out is tough. You get chafy wafy and I'm not a fan. Bird Dogs comes with that inside lining and I love it. And it's not the netting like the swimsuit from when we were a kid where it bunches up your cojones and makes it uncomfortable. No, this is beautiful lining that's stretchable and durable, but it's so you don't have to put on underwear and shorts and, and you don't just go with that rubbing and chafing and, and lifting. I don't like that. I hate that when it wiggles its way up your leg uh, into your tush. Bird dog stuff is so uh, comfortable. You can wear them anywhere. I wore it hiking, then I wore it to the bar on Sunday when I had one too many soda pops. Um, I love bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com. Check out all that they've got. Different colors, different styles. It's classy and comfortable, and it's a little bit cheaper than uh, a competitive brand that does kind of the same stuff, but they overprice other stuff, and you know who I'm talking about. Bird Dogs is great. Go to birddogs.com, enter the code whiskey, and they're going to throw in a free Bird Dogs dad hat. You get a pop hat there on your head. It's birddogs.com, birddogs.com, promo code whiskey, and boom, you're going to get a free Bird Dogs dad hat with your pair of Bird Dogs 
Get your downstairs ready for summer with bird dogs. Uh, I'm telling you, you're never going to take these things off. Bird dogs. Ginger. I like gingers. There's a little. There's got to be a little bit of something in you that's um, uh, uh, uncertain where you're like, ooh, there's a little piece of them I don't really know. Yeah, because then if, if, if you don't have that little thing, then it's like you'll just be an actor. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have the little thing that, like, makes us a little quirky. Yeah, but you could, you would be a great actor, too, if you really got into it. And I just want to say... You really should get into I'm it. I'm very mad at the people who don't like my special wish on Reddit. Well, people don't like it. Well, you know what it is. You have your typical... Why age. would you don't read any of that bullshit? No, I didn't. I, I, I actually didn't. I just... um. I Googled Chris Stefano special wish reviews, and then, like, one... Th most of the Reddits are great, but one little subreddit was, like, fucking 38 minutes. He fucking... All he does is tell stories with no punchline. Oh He's, God! He goes, he goes. He goes. Some guy was like, "All these podcast comics, they think they're doing a podcast. They're doing stand up. They should be doing stand up." I was like, "Shut up, you little fucking loser! I, I, I got more punchlines than your mother's asshole." <laughs> 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 I'd love to know what that guy who takes that time out of his day. What does he do for a living? Now, I'm not making fun of his job. I'm just saying, who the fuck do you think you are? Well, what do you do that's so fucking great and important? You take time out of your little bullshit day. To, to comment me. negatively on my shit. Listen, I understand, like, you know, the, like, uh, in the roles that we're in, like, you know, we wouldn't be the type of people that would even start a Reddit. But it's like, uh, I'm, and I'm not shitting on people who go on Reddit, whatever you do. But, like, it sometimes it is hard for me where, where it's like, I wouldn't comment on anybody's stuff negative ever. I just won't watch like, it. <laughs> like, if I didn't like something even a friend put out, I would just say nothing. I wouldn't even let you know. Like, I'd be yeah. like, it's up to you, dude. There are moments in time. I'm not, what am I going to tell you? Well, there was a you show. You got haters? We just started watching a show and I didn't like it and we turned it off. That's all you do. What am I going to tweet about it? <laughs> it's sort of waste How of my much time. I hate this show. Yeah, I, I was like, that. yeah, this is, it is what it is. Yeah, it's just like, okay, yeah, I didn't like that thing or I don't like that person. I don't watch them anymore. I'm not even going to let them know. If you're busy, if you're busy, it's pretty hard to take time to spend effort shitting on things. I'm busy. I don't. What the fuck? I don't care. I think. I think the better the better your personal life is, the less you want to show it off in public. You know ah, what I mean? That's really. I think if you yeah. have a really good and you're content with your personal life, it's like I don't feel the need to have to go public with anything because I'm like I'm happy at home. Well, that being said, you, know? this, you can click right here or look down below. This is Chris Stefano's home address. We're putting it up on the screen it right now. Please send him mail. Uh, send yes. him fan art and show up if you do yes. want to show up. The hours to show up are, of course, Monday through Sunday, anytime yes. after 9 p.m. There you go. So 9 p.m. till about 5 or 6 in the morning. If you'd like to pop on by, that's his address right there. Go ahead and do it. Uh, and he'd and, love to have you. And and uh, pictures of uh, unsolicited pictures of um, T.T. Jerry's feet and Jasmine's feet, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Does Jerry have a, a, a OnlyFans? No, but I'm really actually you encouraging her that. to do that. because because And she There's wants so to do it. so much money but, in it. I mean, some of the people like that we know that I've heard that are like, oh, we have a we have a mutual friend. Park. We have a mutual friend that's making fifty grand a month. I heard about that mutual friend, and I was like, whoa, what's going on? I was like, I was like, oh, is that why so and so's not on the pod anymore? And they were like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, and then I joined <laughs> the OnlyFans. <laughs> I wanted to see, but you know what's so funny? But I don't. I'm not mad at anybody for that. No, because it's a way to look. This is what's. This is what we, me and Bob talked about this. It's ironic because I want to support. I support sex work of any kind, whatever you want. I'm a sex worker. As long you definitely are, <sighs> as long as it's on your own volition. Sure. If you want to do it, how? Why would I fucking care that you do it? Here's my thing. Go bananas! And I hope I, people buy all your shit. And I know people. I know people might disagree, but I really thought about this. Here's my thing. You were born with a talent. Okay, you're very <laughs> funny. Act and you cultivate it, and you have to work on it, and you you stay in shape, and all those things, right? You you were born you were born with the gift though of like you're either funny or you're not. Yeah. Some of these women, you're either born hot or you're not. Like some yeah. of these women, like she's not, so it's like, you, what what am I to do now? Like she has to cultivate her body and and do things and come. If up I with was it. hot, I would sell my shit. Why not? Yeah. It's like if people are paying for it, the only people who get mad at that are people that can't figure it out on their own. Either they can't afford it or they or they're very or they're unattractive and they can't do it. So it's like that's not my problem, babe. Yeah, no. Like that's not you know, my like problem. go support the I, I hey listen, it's a time we're in a time and place in the world where it's like this is what it is. Now ancient Rome got to a place like Ugh, this. Boy, and then, we missed that time period. And then it fucking ended. So are mm -hmm. we at the end? Probably. Would you have taken baths with all those guys? 100%. Yeah. 100% a nice Roman bath. But can you imagine? I bet you some of those guys are packing pipes because you know the oh. Romans, they got big old thicky things. Big old thickies and fucking 
full bushes. Yeah, big bush. Big bush. You know, it's 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 weird to see a bush now, but I, I like it. I still have one. You have a bush. I I clean it up a little bit, but I do like to keep a little puff of hair down there. Yeah, I asked Jazz if she can if she can go if she can bush. I said I just want it to look like a spear of broccoli down there, and she <laughs> said no. <laughs> You told me that she, she's got she's got shaved the Puerto Rican flag. Yes, that's a, she, yeah. That's got a lot of manuc- yeah, manicure. Yeah, no, she she got that, and then and then and then uh, and then she shaved huepa into it. Right onto the top because huepa. I told you told me when you were trimming your pubes, you shaved BLM into your pubes. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I that did. That was your that was your contribution. Yes, yes, I, I I shaved BLM into my pubes, and you know when everyone posted that black square, I posted your black my BLM pubes. pubes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love BLM, man. <laughs> Did you ever see this? <laughs> there was a guy that was trolling. BL- he was trolling because some woman was online. This guy's really great. I want. I wish I could find out what his name is, but he does these things where he like makes up fake fa- fake Facebook admins so people think they're the real account. Okay. So like it was a woman complaining about BLM, being like BLM is bullshit, da 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 da, all this stuff. Yeah. And then he made a fake admin called the Bureau of Land Management. <laughs> but but he had it blue, like he had it blue checked or whatever. BLM. Dude, it, this kid is a genius. I've seen he's on TikTok and he's on I've seen him on Twitter. But he then he responds on Facebook. I, I'm sorry. What um, what's the problem with you know what is your big deal with the the Bureau of Land Management? She's like, don't this is you know this is not at you. Stop trolling me. Blah 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 blah. And he was going back and forth with this woman. <laughs> Dude, it was so brilliant because she was pissed. She yeah. was like. That's not what I'm talking about. He's like, they're like, what are you talking about? If not the Bureau of Land Management, what BLM are you speaking about? What BLM? But she wouldn't say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? She didn't yeah. want to, she didn't want to say because she was like, I don't want them to know, no, that yeah. I'm, and she doesn't want to get fired from her fucking job. But it was so, I was like, this guy's great. He trolls a bunch of different people and does this all the time. Whenever somebody complains, because that's the thing. We always want to complain at a company. I, I wish more companies clap back. Yeah. I wish more companies like, fuck you. Fuck you. Mark. Shut up. Shut the fuck well, up. Well, that's why I, I like, and that's why, in a way, when Netflix, where you can catch my special, Special Weshi. Special Weshi out right now. now on Netflix. I'm going to show you how many stars it's got but, on here. But listen, but, but show you. Netflix kind of clapped back with the whole Chappelle hate. They were like, yeah, we're going to give him another deal. Because- well, he, well, here's why. Because it, because for them, they were like, what What do you want us to do? What What, what would be the right? You, know you know what somebody said? Oh, God, I can't remember what comic I was talking to. When people get mad at at somebody like that, or they're trying to cancel them, or they're upset at something they did or said or whatever, is that a little tootie pooty? Yeah, tootie ricochet pooty. off my balls. I was just gonna say that chair. By the way, now I can't sell it. Well, Oof. or or I can't. Wow. Wow, it smells like Priscilla's. Holy shit! <laughs> no, but but my whole the comic. I don't remember. I think I want to say it was Ryan Simpson, but he was saying, "Give us a blueprint over how you want people to handle it." Yeah. Because whenever somebody gets upset that people don't handle these things the right way, as a third party, you're like, "How do you want me to handle? How do you want me to feel about all this?" Right. It's it's annoying that, that someone guy, gets Brian mad. Simpson's hilarious. He's by the so way. fucking funny. I I watched his um. He's on the know, show the tonight. Ne- the Netflix um. His Netflix special. 15, I yeah. mean, it's just like clear, unreal. Co- like is she, he's hold on. Great. Let, so speaking of which, no, see, but tell, but tell the truth. How's it doing? I want to look at the special Weshi. It real was quick. on trending now, but I don't know if it is anymore. Chris DeStefano, the special Weshi. Okay, first of all. Out of the 64 votes on IMDb, 8 out of 10. Pretty fucking good. That's not bad. That, are you kidding 10. me? That's really good. Yeah. I think You're not going to really get a 10 out of 10. Well, you could. No, that's impossible. Yeah. And here's the first, and let me see the first critic review. All right, here you go. Chris Stefano's special Weshi is unbelievable. I came 17 times. This guy is a mega babe. Wow, what a pipe on this Tardo. Little more than a, it's a little more than a half hour. It's engaging and funny. And boy, oh boy, do I like to come. His other special, 38 Waste, also made me come not as much as this. In fact, Stefano was set to release Special Weshi on YouTube, but since no one can come as much on YouTube as they do on Netflix, he decided this is the best place to feature it. Wow. My dad. <laughs> is, that, is that Tampa Tony? That's Tampa T. Going for it? Going for it. I, look, I think, I think you, do, you did the right thing by putting it out there. Now, can I ask you, just because it's only us, it's our little family in it's here. It's only us listening. Are you going to do it? I don't know. I I'm, th- I'm thinking about it. I'm yeah. actually, I'm, I'm thinking about talk it. Talk off air? No, no, no. We can talk on air. I'm thinking about doing it. I don't know where I'd want to shoot it. I don't I don't know, man. My biggest problem I is- I got Robbie um, Pro in my trunk right now. Is he there? He's tied up. You want to talk to him? <laughs> 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 I got him. No, uh, in, in the meantime, honestly, all I really want to do is end this tour outright, do the last couple of dates that I got. Come to New York and see my little fucking uh, boy. When are you going to come to New York? What are the dates? In June. What dates? 
June, I am going to be in New Jersey. New Jersey. Oh, at the Wellmont, right? At the Wellmont. Did you play that already? No, but you told me about it. I looked it up. It looks gorgeous. So I'm going to play the Wellmont, uh, but but I'm doing in May. I do Vancouver, uh, then Lake Tahoe, then I do June 10th. I'm at Montclair, New Jersey. Then we go to Niagara Falls. Me and Chris O'Connor go up to Niagara Falls. So are you just in New Jersey on June 10th and then Niagara Falls the very next day? Yeah, but then I come back to New York. I'm there for a week. Or no, more than a week. You're in filming something out there, or you're just chilling? I'm coming for a little side thing I got going on. Side thing. Um, June. Because I'm, I am trying to shoot. We're, I'm going to shoot a little thing out because there. Because why don't we um uh, go to Yankees games? I get Yankees tickets. I would love to Easy be Yankees a Yankee tickets. fan. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, Cubs fans out there know the fights have started. I don't know if you follow on no, Barstool. What's going on? Well, first of all, the I heard big cats moving back to Chicago. Is that it? Is that true? Yeah. Oh, and I want to talk to you about that before yeah. we. Yeah. We'll get there in a second. Yeah. Because you went to the bar stool, you went to the bar stool offices, and hold on, we'll talk about yeah. it. There are fights in the bleachers again, and the bleacher bums in Chicago. As a Chicago Cubs fan, we had the crosstown rivalry that we played in the White Sox, and and I got to tell you something, nothing warms my heart more than seeing people in the bleachers of the Chicago Cubs Wrigley Field Stadium fighting other Chicago Cubs. You guys were doing it right. We're fighting ourselves. We're not fighting the other fans. Keep it insular. Fight our fight our own because that's what was going on. They were kicking in the heads of another Cub fan, and I said. Yeah. Look at these Cub guys kicking each other. Don't beat up the fucking visitors. Make them feel welcome. Beat the shit out of your own friends. Yep. That's what I love about the Cubs. And I want to go back to you at the Barstool Sports Offices, mm-hmm. and I heard that you had a little issue wish. Mm-hmm. You didn't like it. I saw that you said that. Yeah. And Portnoy commented on it, didn't Portnoy he? Portnoy commented on it. I think it's all blown over now, though. I went in there. I went in to do uh, KFC. Shout out KFC. Um, I went to do their show, KFC Radio, with him and Feidelberg's over there. KFC and Feidelberg's, good yeah, times. Uh, yeah, good guys. I walked into, they have like a little f- uh, fishbowl kind of thing where they do, I, I guess Big Cat does a show in there, and, uh, you know, who I know, and then he waved me in. And I was thinking, oh, wave me in to come talk about stuff, you know, before I hit KFC. I know they were live on a show, like, you know, comic pop in real quick. Oh, I sure. got Chrissy D here, whatever, you know, whatever BS. We'd... As soon as I walked in there, though, they go, tell me a joke. Like, they were treating me, like, disrespectfully, like, Tell me a joke like that. And I was like, what is that? Well, no, I what? was like, I was like, tell you. I was like, what? I was like, no, I'm not. I was, I was like, I forgot what I said. I like started making fun of the guy next mm-hmm. to him. I was like, this guy's whatever sweater. I don't know what I said. Right. And then I was like, uh, one of the guys was like, where are you going next? I was like, oh, I'm going to Indianapolis um, uh, next week. And I had been tweeting that week about Pat McAfee. I was like, yo, if I don't get on Pat McAfee's show, I'm canceling Indianapolis. Like, mm-hmm. you, Indianapolis, you have 24 hours to get me on Pat McAfee's show. I'm going to have COVID on Friday, April 8th, which is when I was doing Indianapolis. It was like a whole bit I was doing. And then this kid, KB, he goes, what are you, open up for Pat McAfee in Indianapolis? I was like, who what? the fuck are you? What is that? What does and that mean? I was like, what? I was like, no. And then, and then this guy, Sean Latham, the $20 chef, who's a great guy from Indianapolis, he goes, uh, what do you, then KB goes, what are you going to open up for, for Sean Latham? I was like, opening up for who? What are you talking about? With the, like, just ch- treating me like- It didn't a, land. So I was like, fuck these guys. So <laughs> I forgot what I said to them. I was joking around, whatever. But then I went on KFC show like minutes later, fuming. You hit him And I hard. just started going at KB. And, <laughs> uh, and then all the KB's little minions, uh, you know, Twitter and all that stuff. And, uh, but it was just one of those things where it was like, as like I don't care, like we are all fucking ribbing each other, but it's like I'll get ribbed by you. And yeah, it's like you, dude. You're people know Big Cat, not you. They only know you because you're sitting next to Big Cat. Yeah, like what are you talking about? You know what how I many mean? people are in that room with him? Is it like a like whole eight room or nine guys? people? Jesus Christ! It was like a little minions thing. So, but like whatever. And then you know, and then that's nasty. the thing. And then you get like his little min, you know, the little barstool minions. But it's like it's just you know, it's almost like like little just like barnacles where you're just like get the fuck off me. <laughs> Even when I was at the Yankee game, some guy was like KB owned you, KB owned you, and then. He, I was like, no, he didn't. I was like, I'm sitting behind home plate. What are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, KB owned you. And then he tried to lean in to take a picture. And it wasn't that high, but he tried to lean in, take, which I wouldn't take a picture with him. And then he was like leaning back like that. And I just gave him a little tug on his hood and he flipped over the railing. And I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't fall. It wasn't like his boys were laughing at him. It was like a, you know, it was like a little, he felt like That's the thing, though. That's the thing. When those guys are ribbing you, though, that, not the guys in the studio, or probably them too, but those, like that guy, he's a fan. That guy yeah, being like, you know, that's the thing. Yeah, you know it was like, it was like, off, and, I would, but, and I'm not even that mad at the Barstool guys. It was just in that moment, I was like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, where are you coming yeah, from? Yeah, but then I just, you know, made fun of it all and just, you know, but it's like, that's the thing too, what I realized like with Twitter and I didn't, I took me a while to get to this. But now it's that like, Elon's got it. Yeah, but if you just don't respond to anyone, it's just, it's like, 
you, there, the fire has to go out. Nobody can say anything to you. Well, anymore. Twitter's kind of like this. Uh, I, I, look, I don't know, and and I, it's just kind of this blank universe of nothingness to me. It's just like every time I go on, I'm getting less and less interested in it. I used to have fun on it, yeah, and now I'm like, this means almost nothing to me, and yeah, I, I almost, never tweet anymore. I was going to say I retweet an article here and there with a comment on, it, and that's pretty much that's kind of what I do. And too. you know what I did now is 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 which is great is I I one of the girls that works for me, shout out Venetia, she's taking. Oh, over. I like her. She wait, she used Venetia's to be great. Uh, Wait, she used to work on History Highness, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. I like her. Vanitia, the Greeks. Shout out the V. She, she, um, she's taken over my Instagram. So like, you just gave it to her, like, just you do it. You, do, I, I don't have it on my phone anymore. Well, I still have it on my phone, but I'm transitioning to get it off. But I'm like, you're transitioning. Oh my god. That's what the next special is going to be about. Look at you, you sly fox. This is how you get in the business. Yeah, it's yeah. My new special is called the new Hannah Gatsby. And it's going to be me. Wow. That's my inspo. You do kind of look alike. I know. You've got a little bit of Gatsby in you. I do. Not great Gatsby. Hannah Gatsby. Hannah Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> I am a great Hannah Gatsby. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I, and not having so you're social media. you getting rid of it. Well, because you know what it is? You know what I've been realizing as I get a little older? And maybe because having the second kid where you like just like you need every ounce of mental energy to try to raise two children is I was like. Dude, all this does is take time away from me. I, I'm at a place, thankfully, because of the fans, thank you, where it's like I need to have a presence on social media. I, I'm not at any pl place to do that, but I don't need to be responding to everybody anymore or even have it on my phone. Mm. I can send. I'm doing well enough where I can pay this person to do it for me so I can spend more time with the family present. And right. I feel like, you know. See, now they're going to hit you up knowing that it's that it's her. And they're going to be like, show your feet. <laughs> and any picture of NNT. And she's like, OnlyFans, go to my OnlyFans. What if she promotes her OnlyFans on your page? She has OF, doesn't she? She uh, No. She should. And, and you know, like and by the way, girl, by I don't know way, why you don't have one. And by the way, it doesn't have to be, I know the, the instinct is nudes or whatever. It doesn't have to be, OnlyFans can be anything. No, I think, what's her face? The, the, the top ranked one uh, uh, who makes 50 or 60 million. Bad, maybe, bad baby. Baby doesn't put any nudes. I think she does just boobs. Somebody told me but she has boobs. Out? I don't know, oh. but, but 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 I've heard that it's I've heard that it's not it's not pornographic in nature. But she might put a boob out there. Who's in OnlyFans? Who's someone that doesn't have OnlyFans? That if they made OnlyFans, you would seriously join for real at mm. twenty dollars a month. Ooh, like you'd seriously for real? You'd be like, I will go. I will get it. Paul Rudd. If that sexy little Jewish man gets on yeah. there and shows his little feet, yep. you better believe. You know who mine I'm is? signing up, huh? Seriously? Uh huh. Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine imagine? <laughs> Rudy Giuliani's only fans. Just eating something. Yeah, naked. which is the, the dye coming the off. The dye. His face he's he's just... eating just a banana. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's just got no pants on. By the way, Giuliani could make a fuckload of money on OnlyFans. Oh, my God. Because I would pay to see him do fun yeah. stuff or on if, there. If, if, honestly, if Donnie T did it. Donnie T doesn't, but Don, I'm a, he's above it unless he could own it. That's the right. problem. He wouldn't do it unless he could own it. Who owns OnlyFans? That's a good thing because whoever. Genuinely, that's such no, a good question because I don't that, know. Because whoever created that, actually, because it's almost like if you told me 10 years ago, hey, what about just. You know, we are fine. Prostitution is illegal, but what about just women being naked on their phone and you just pay okay. five bucks for it? All it's right, a genius idea. Well, here you go. OnlyFans. OnlyFans is an internet subscription service based in London, uh, London, United Kingdom, and they're owned by a company that is called Phoenix International Limited. So it's probably Disney. It's, seriously, it's probably Disney. It's got to be Disney. It. It's Amazon. I, I or bet Disney. you it's one of their or, or Bezos. Yeah. Look one at this, man. It was launched in November 2016. Oh my God. Platform to provide clips and photos. For a monthly subscription fee, Tim Stokely uh, founded uh, the, uh, the company alongside his older brother with a $10,000 loan from his father. Yep. $10,000 loan from his father. Two years later, Ukrainian-American businessman Leonard Ravitsky, yeah. owner of My Free Cams. Oh, you know My Free Cams. Acquired 75% of it. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Wow, that's incredible. Bella yeah. Thorne earned a million dollars in one day. That was a whole big thing. A million bucks in one, one day. One time I DM Bella Thorne and one she day. parted my DM. She hearted the DM? Yep. What did it say? I was like, huge fan. Could I borrow some money? Yep. Huge fan? Is that what you said? Yeah, but I was it was it was I was single at the time. It was a ploy to try to. But it was at the lamest DM you've sent. Oh yeah, huge oh, well, fan. Oh no, the, is lame. the 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 no the lame dude. Not even a DM. The lamest comment I've ever made in public. Her name. It, you know the show Vikings. Mm. Um, go, 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 Google Vi the show Vikings. Vikings got it. Catherine something. Okay. Gorgeous woman. Catherine. Google Vikings cast the Vik the show. Catherine. The here it is. 
Her name is Catherine Winnick. Catherine Winnick. Beautiful girl. Yeah. The the um And you uh, DM this girl yeah, thinking that you even her. had a shot. The 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 um the the main character in her uh in the show Vikings in season one, season two, her love interest Beautiful. and her husband. His name is Odin. He's like a big mythical Viking creature. Okay. And I wrote on her public Instagram, Catherine. I'll be your Odin any day, babe. <laughs> I love you, or something like that. Like, I'll be your Odin any day. Loser. Something like that, like a loser. And then I was like, oh, like, whatever. Like, at the moment, I was like, she's going to see this, respond to it, and be like, yep. this is my Odin. Yep. Because I was on guy code, and I'm like, she cares. And then, <laughs> and then it's a hit. I, I looked, and I had like 100 notifications. I was like, oh my God, this girl like wrote back to me. There's the only, like, I have 100 notifications on that post. She wrote back to me. It's insane. To so open it up, like, literally being like, what did she say? Like, I can't wait to DM her. And it was all, like, podcast fans or comedy fans being like, you fucking loser. You pussy. Aww. And they had screenshot. And then one guy was like, you can delete this. I already screenshot it. I was like, that. Yeah. You, didn't, you just shot your shot. You shot, shot your little shot. shot. Yeah, but it was brutal, dude. She's oh. smoking hot, though. She's very beautiful. And yeah. to think that you thought you had a chance is even it's funnier. crazy. That's the crazy. Well, I want to ask you one thing, no. okay? Before no, no, we no, go no. Get, We got to no, go get no. food soon. Ah, la, 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 Fine. not listening. Why did no. you, the specials, how long? 38 minutes. Why did you choose 38? Because I thought, and again, just a little testy westy, I don't know if this is going to be, you know, I, I figured, you know, some of my peers, you know, or, or so, let's say some of the older guys, like guys that I love and respect, like, you know, uh, Colin Quinn, Me. Santino, yeah. you know, um, would be like, it's not a real hour. It's all 38 minutes, not every hour. And I was like, that's true. Fine, I'll give you that. But I was like, I had the hour. I did an hour. I just edited it because I was like, e even me, take Dave Chappelle, the GOAT of comedy. Even me watching Chappelle, I can't watch an hour anymore. Mm -hmm, just because hard. I'm like, I'm on my phone. I, 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 it's too much. So I was like, let me try to do something. I thought it, I was thinking of the algorithm, actually. Like, what if it's just 36? It's 36 minutes. What if it's just 36 minutes? And like, let people watch the whole thing in that one sitting. Yeah. Maybe it's an algorithm thing. Leave them wanting more. You know, when I do live, I do an hour, an hour plus, of course. But I was like, this is not about, I want them to come see me live. I want them to, I want this to get them. Right. So I was thinking, and again, it could blow up in my face or some people have already commented like, it's not a real hour. Who gives a fuck? But I'm like, the whole term out, to me, the whole term hour doing an hour is, we can always call it an hour, but I think doing 60 minutes now, at least for... What I was just thinking about, what I would like, I'm like, I don't want to watch 60 minutes of anybody. Right. Or I can't watch it in one sitting. I'd have no, to watch you it over a few. No, you definitely field. can't watch it in one. I have to, if I watch it, I watch it in a big chunk. I watch it usually in fi like 15 to 20 minutes. That's first. what I'm saying. So I figured if you watch 15 minutes of it, then you've already seen half of it. You know, maybe Might you as watch well make, a, make some food, take a shit. Yeah, walk come the back dog and, and come it's, back. It's easy to finish the last 15. That's what I was hoping for. Again, I don't know how it's going to work. Netflix says they need about 10 days to know because they said, look, even getting on the trending now page, they were like, it's great, but. Everything takes off in the beginning, you know. Right. It's, it's but it's can you stay? So I don't know. I I'll think you. I think you can stay. I'll let you know in 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 eight days. Well, I think all the fans should do us a favor right now and please go watch Special Weshi and tell everybody that you know to please watch Special Weshi and please spread it around. And the and more rate it and re if you can give it the double thumbs up, I was told that goes a long way. So on I Netflix, yeah. If you is do, that a thing? Yeah. So you can do you know when it says rate this underneath, uh -huh. you can you know thumbs down, thumbs up, or two thumbs up for love it. So if you guys want to put love it, that would just help me a lot. Well, wait, I never knew that. That's a real thing. Huh? It's a real thing, yeah. That that they actually Netflix looks at. What? Yeah, and then guess what? But I've what? never rated a thing on Netflix my whole life. It It's something that they... Have you ever done that? No, I, well, I did Have you ever it. rated something on Netflix before? No. Yeah, just your special. That's what he said. And guess what? Also a little fun surprise is in about two to three months, we have another special that's going to be coming out on YouTube. And in about three weeks... We have another special, another section of the special that only available at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy will all be different material that's already filmed, locked, and ready to load by Homeless Pimp. And then the one on YouTube, again, all different material. So youtube.com slash Christy Comedy will have one and patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Look at you, you're putting one. it out. So, okay. Well, well, so I tried to section. In total, it's going to be over an hour, easily over yes, an hour. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's well. kind of why I did, I'm trying to do it this way because I'm like, hey, there's not only one way to do this anymore. So I'm trying to do, you this know. This is so smart. Well, that I'm way trying. you're not burning all the shit that you like in one location. Yeah. You know what you're doing? You're playing roulette and you're, you're hitting a couple of corners of the chips, huh? Listen, as, you hitting know. the quads. The smartest, you know, one of the best books ever in. I think more important than the Bible, The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. He says that <laughs> in the book, always have multiple streams of revenue. That's the way to maintain wealth. So that's what I'm Correct. trying to do. Correct. Multiple streams of revenue. Revy. What, are some, what are your some of your other favorite books? Oh, God, what do I like? Uh, 48 Laws of Power. Love it. Um, 
the five the five um things you must know before you die by John Izzo. Love it. Uh The Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Love it. Um Anne of Green Gables. Love it. Uh what else do I love? Um uh The Art The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Love it. I like that one. Love that, that one. Was a, that one's on my Sapiens. Cover. Love it. Homos? Homo Sapiens. So Homo's the first one. Sapiens yeah. the second book. You gotta love buy it. both books. The four hour work week. Love it. That's good too. Yep. Look at you. You're and, actually uh, reading again. What else? What else do I love? Oh, um Mein Kampf. You've always Mein Kampf. Um the uh the idiots the idiot's guide to the crusades. Love it. <laughs> you like that? I like the idiot's guide <laughs> to the crusades. <laughs> but look, if what do you the like fans, to read? if the fans don't go oh. watch Speshy Weshy. I'm going to be disappointed in all of you. Here's what I'll say to you guys. Because you know better. And I appreciate it. Go support him. And by the way, watch 15 minutes. and Or put it on the background when you're fucking. Yeah. Just put it on the background when you're fucking. And that helps me. And how about this? Let me, which is my camera? This one? That one, yeah. Watch. I have a, a, a beautiful family. I'm trying mm. my. One of the kids. Yeah, one of the kids is very cute. I have a, I have a, I've, 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 I've half a beautiful family. <laughs> I have, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to be positive. I'm a happy person. I enjoy being on earth. I'm trying to do good for the community. If you don't watch my special, I'm talking every single one of you right now and rate it. I will take my own life. Oh, I will take okay. my own life. Okay. And it will be on you. Blood will be on <laughs> all your hands. I will take my own fucking life. <laughs> 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 By the way, that's good marketing. Hell yeah. Did you do a press run? Well, did you, what from a publicist or some shit? Well, we hired a publicist and they struck out. Well, uh, did you did, they wanted to put you on like regular TV? Well, we could stuff? literally no the PR people we hired were great. Um the uh uh literally one hundred percent of the asks that we put out to get me on like a couch for like late night or anything. And it was all no. No, no, no. All the only there? people that said yes were you guys, the, of course the podcast the potties. Potties. Um, and some people on Fox 5, New York City. Why don't you do Rosanna that? Scott. I'm doing it. Rosanna Scotto, all that. Yeah. Well, what about, wait, you're telling me like Jimmy Kimmel said no, all those guys said no? Everybody said no. What? Emilio, what? anybody say yes? To, to doing press. Did he, no couch, he couldn't do like Kimmel or Fallon? No. What about, uh, what about like John Oliver? I mean, not John Oliver. What about like uh, Seth Meyers? Nope. That's later at night. Yeah. Bill Maher, Bill Maher. Uh, they all, but, they're for, but I'm sitting here today with it's the It's a no app. right now. All, but what I'm good, what I did do, and again, just trying to do something else, is I took, you know, a, 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 a de decent money for me, like you know, because I'm like, because Netflix is not advertising it, nobody's advertising it, like all the advertising is on me, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do the thing, and hopefully it works, you know, pay pretty significant money on by my standards to put it on meme pages, to put clips on big, huge meme pages, like as much as we're like, fuck these meme pages. I'm like, this is the way, but this is where the eyeballs are. Sure. So let me see if it helps at all. And then I, because my thing is I'm still in a point right now where it's like, let me try these things and then I'll know. Like, that's why, because people are like, why did you, why did you go for Netflix and not just put on YouTube? I'm like, because I know what it feels like to be on YouTube and I love it and I'm going to keep we're going. We're on but, it every day. But, but let me see what, if Netflix does anything. And then if it doesn't, then I know. And then and you then, learned. And then if it does, I'm like, okay, this can be an avenue. Right. And it didn't hurt you at all. If it goes on Netflix and it is what it is. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. And then it's like, okay, let's say in a, in a world where it doesn't work, then I'll just know to do the next one on YouTube. That's all. And if it does work, then I know it works. What, what the fuck? Or you quit comedy. That's what I'm doing. Which is what most of the fans are hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you look at that subreddit, yeah. <laughs> no, don't. Don't look you at know, any I'll of that I'll tell you off air just because I can't, but one comment, dude, it hurt. It hurt in a place that- You can't it, say it on it, the air? I can't say it on the air. I'll tell you off the air. If if somebody said this to you, you would be dead, dude. You, I was dying. That's what Gillis, Gillis said. There was one comment. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what it is because it's his business. Yeah. But Gillis said there was one comment on YouTube of all the fucking bullshit when he yeah. put his special up. He said there was one that hurt him so much. It yeah. actually, he, no. he thought about it. He said for days. I'll, no, no <laughs> literally, dude, I swear to God, I read that comment and then I cried yeah. in the shower. <laughs> I was washing myself with a loofah. That, okay, that you should have put on Patreon. You crying from comments in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a funny bit on Patreon to just get a camera, a waterproof you camera. You're bawling because of comments. Yeah. You just read somebody. Jazz just yeah, reading on Jazz. Yeah, Jazz reading the comments to you while you're in the shower, just yeah. bawling. Or I'm sitting in a tub. Jerry's washing my back as as <laughs> as they're fucking reading. I mean, dude, I'll tell you off. You're gonna you're when I say this to you because it wasn't even that bad. It's but gonna hit. You're gonna be like you're gonna be like if somebody said that to me. You you it's it was like. I, I wanted to like genuinely, I, I literally, once I read that, I was like, 
I don't know that if this is the career choice for me. <laughs> like, like, because uh, I thought I wasn't that, and that person, it's almost like that thing, like Mulaney has like a great bit, I, I'm paraphrasing it, where he's like, how like teenagers just know how to hit you in a thing that you're uncomfortable about. Like, we're like, oh, look at your wide ass hips or something like that. And you're like, they are big or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's what it was. Like, this one thing that I'm like, I've thought about privately in my own thoughts. Like, well, at least my comedy's not like that. And then that guy said exactly what I was and dreading. It hit you hard. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Special Weshi. Yeah. You guys know what to do. Go support uh, our family because it means a lot to us. Um, I want to thank you so much. We can go get some Dinsky nows. Let's go get some Dinsky. We end the episode the same way, as always. And I can't wait to have you back a million more times because every time we do, we have a little fun. And yes. I love you so much. Yes. And I want you to look inside of that camera um, and say one word or one phrase to end the episode whenever you're ready. And I okay. know what it's going to be. Go ahead. I just want to say quickly, christycomedy.com. Check all the dates out there. Patreon.com slash christycomedy. And the thing I want to say, sincerely, and I appreciate you giving me this platform, is there's a lot of, and I don't know if a lot of people know this about me, and I'm being genuine. Um, you know, what my heritage is, is obviously the conflict going on that's all over the news uh, with Russia, Ukraine, and it mean a lot to me um, because what Ukraine is doing to my people is horrible. So go out there and support Russia and help them <laughs> get what's rightfully theirs. <laughs> we want Maripol. <laughs> In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You 